I'm George Walker, author of the Design Matters column in Popular Woodworking Magazine. Today I'd like to look at how to unpack a classic design that can inform your inner eye. For centuries, artisans looked to great work from the past to gain practical artistic skill at the workbench. Once you understand and can see the bones beneath of masterful work, you find yourself able to experiment. This becomes a tool to spark your intuition. Let's start by unpacking a pair of curved aprons from two 18th century Connecticut high boys. These compositions reveal clues that can inform contemporary as well as traditional designs. Now when I look at these two curved decorative aprons, um, I see differences and I see uh, similarities. Um, first let's start with the similarities that I see in these. Um, they both employ sima, sweeping sima curves that are combined together to create a pleasing composition. Um, also, both of these designs are symmetrical. By that I mean if you draw a vertical center line down through the composition, there's a mirror image on left and right. That's sort of where the similarities end. To my eye, the composition on the bottom is a little more bubbly, a little more lively, and the top one's a bit more static. But let's dive into this and see why this may be so. One of the ways to unpack a design is to understand how it's actually laid out originally. A Sima curve is a pair of curves that span an imaginary layout line, a straight line, and the curves go above it and below it. So let's lay in a layout line from the beginning to the ending of this curve to see what it will tell us. When I look at that layout line, stand back and look at it, one of the things it says to me is they took this, this line and they divided it in half and they drew an identical curve above it and below it. I also notice that this layout line points up towards this uh, apex in the center of this composition and, and it tells me that this composition actually the whole thing is pointing upwards. When I look down at this one below even without putting layout lines on there this seems to be flowing downwards toward the bottom of this arc. That's another difference. If I put another layout line on this smaller Sima curve um, I would find out the same thing, that it's a symmetrical Sima curve. The, the curves are identical on either side of the transition point. And that layout line would also point upward towards this apex. Now let's take a look at this composition on the bottom and what's different about it. Right away, when I put a layout line on this first major Sima curve on the outside and span the ending points and the transition, I can see that it's not a symmetrical Sima curve. It's got a major and a minor. Um, and it's very, it's, it's not at all symmetrical. And if I place another layout line on the smaller Sima curve that's right adjacent to it, I've got the same thing. I've, I've got a major and a minor Sima curve. So I've got a pairing of Sima curves, but they're, uh, they're not symmetrical. And there's also a couple layers of difference. The major curve on this large Sima is concave. The major curve on this small Sima is convex. It's almost like they have a major and the minor, but they flipped them opposite each other, so they create some more contrast. The other thing that actually comes out at me when I look at these is these layout lines. Uh, this large one actually points up towards this carving at the center of this. There's actually a drawer there. And the layout line for the small Sima actually points downward towards the bottom apex of this arc here. So I've got, instead of having layout lines that are going in the same direction, I've got layout lines that actually go up and they go down and they create kind of this flowing uh, pattern across this composition. For that reason, I believe that's why this thing visually flows differently than the one up top. I hope this is helpful. Mm -hmm.